Remember the Obamacare architect caught claiming that a lack of transparency and the stupidity of the American voters helped the Obama administration get the health care law passed? Well, now, economist Jonathan Gruber, well, he wants a do-over. Call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. The comment in the video were made at an academic conference. I was speeding off, speaking off the cuff. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. I basically spoke inappropriately. This bill was written in a tortured way to make sure CBO did not score the mandate as taxes. If CBO scored the mandate as taxes, the bill dies. Public policy that involves spending is typically less politically palatable than policy that involves doing things for the tax code. You can't do it politically. You just literally cannot do it. This is something we've seen going back actually through the Clinton and Bush presidencies. You get a law which said healthy people are going to pay in. It made explicit the healthy people pay in and sick people get money. It would not have passed. It would have made more sense to do Obamacare the way we did in Massachusetts, which would be to just actually give people money. We can make it all transparent, but I'd rather have this law than not. I regret having made those comments. It's nice to see you, sir. Good to see you. Welcome back to town. Um, your thoughts about Jonathan Gruber, who incidentally um, is one of the architects of Obamacare, and also, uh, I should note, we have Romney Care in Massachusetts. Um, but he has says, lack of transparency, huge political advantage. <laughs> It's accurate, but it's accurate in a way that hurts the American people. And this is exactly the kind of thing we need to change in Washington. It's one of the reasons why I'm so excited to have the Republican majority in the Senate next year. It's not just about the traditional ideological differences between the two parties. But we as Republicans genuinely do agree that we need to change this. We need to change that dynamic. We need an open and transparent process. He, he also talked about the stupidity of the American people, which is really stupid to say. He's now trying to dial it back because he got caught with his pants down on it. But what it is so troubling as a voter, as an American citizen, is that, you know, what arrogance. I mean, I mean, it's like, this is not supposed to be some game where everyone gets someone put over on someone. Yeah, that's right. But th that's why I say it's accurate. It is, in fact, what they did. It, it was, in fact, their strategy. And it did, in fact, work. Sadly, this sort of thing is far more common than it should be. It's one of the reasons why, in a piece I wrote in The Federalist last week, where I outlined kind of a five-point plan for how we had a change in the next Congress, well, one of the things I pointed out, the very first thing we need to change is we need to restore the trust of the American people by having an open process where members of both parties get to produce amendments and get to have those amendments debated, discussed, and voted upon. Well, you know, this bill, though, whether you're a supporter or, or you, whether you hate it or you love it or you're someplace in between, this bill was passed without any Everybody reading it, which is just insane. Why do we bother to send people to Washington if they're not going to at least read and know what they're voting on? And of course, we had that famous uh, statement by uh, Leader Pelosi about, you know, figure out what's in it later. But I mean, see, the whole idea is that we now find out that the architects are calling the American people stupid. The members of Congress who are voting on it don't read it. Nobody knows what's in it. And it gets shoved down the throat of the American people. Yeah, and that is a big, huge problem. And that's one of the reasons why we have to have a process that allows each member the right to offer up amendments and to have those amendments debated, discussed, and voted upon. Because when you do that, then everybody's accountable. Everybody's accountable to their own voters. But, but and without that, no one's accountable. But what's, I mean, who's accountable for this? I mean, the, the administration will get a public thrashing of, of, by maybe some um, in the media, maybe some other politicians. But I mean, you know, this is like, you know, how, how do we have any real protection against them? And, and this? And it's like, you know, everyone's just going to thrash them and say how bad it is, but then no one's going, I mean, frankly, is anything really going to be done? I think long term it will. I, I think long term this will highlight something that has long been a problem. It's an acute problem that got more attention with Obamacare than in other areas, but it does resurface from time to time. And what we need is for more people to run by campaigning to their constituents and saying, look, if they don't give me time to read something, if I don't know what's in a bill, I will vote against it. But nobody even squawked about it at the time. I mean, there's very little complaining. I mean, certainly, according to the supporting party, in this instance, the Democrats, they weren't squawking about the fact that they didn't get to read it. I mean, they were just happy to vote for it, sort of follow the herd. And that's exactly what has to change. Voters uh, throughout my state in Utah and across America are becoming more and more concerned about this issue. It's really a nonpartisan issue. It just relates to whether or not you're going to do your job, whether or not you're going to read legislation before you vote for it. What do, what do you make of uh, Senator uh, Her uh, Senator Mitch McConnell as uh, majority leader. I think he's going to be a great majority leader, and I look forward to the fact that we're going to have an open, transparent process in the Senate where members of both parties will have the opportunity to introduce amendments. And so he'll uh, get elected uh, unanimously? I think so. Oh, good. Well, we'll be, we'll be watching to see whether or not that happens. Uh, never dull, though, on Capitol Hill, is it? Yeah, it's never dull. Uh, and I, I look forward to the opportunity to govern as part of the majority. Senator, nice to see you, sir. Thank you.